Hola compañeros de la clase de español 2. Soy yo, profe Broom. Aquí, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están ustedes? Feliz lunes, ¿sí? Eh, hoy es lunes el 28 de septiembre. Ya sé, esto dice el 26. That's because it's Saturday and I am recording this because I have nothing better to do with my Saturday than to spend all day getting stuff ready for next week, ¿verdad? Así es la vida de los maestros. Qué bueno, qué bueno. Uh, así que hoy es el 28 de septiembre, lunes. Y uh, just want to show you guys that I uploaded some new vocabulario to Google Classroom. Uh, if you look today at Materiales del Curso, Unit Vocabulary, Spanish 2 Vocabulary. I only have Unit 1 in here so far, ¿verdad? Uh, I added today um, Daily Routine Vocab, see? And this is what we're going to get into today in the Ed Puzzle. It's going to be kind of a uh, flipped classroom front-loading assignment for something that we'll be doing later on this unit. And the reason I chose to introduce it today is because we see some partes del cuerpo that show up in here, see? So it's going to be a way to practice for the quiz tomorrow, see? And a way to also do some front-loading so that you can see what we're going to be doing uh, later on this unit. Muy bien, compañeros. But since there is a quiz tomorrow, and uh, I was looking at some of the um, uh, doctor skits, which were great, um, about three quarters of the class actually made the videos. So something I want to do today, since uh, the quiz will have some doctor vocab on it, is I want to look at those expressions one more time and uh, go over some of the pronunciation of them. And then also we'll just look at partes del cuerpo uh, one more time to let you guys study up for those. So why don't we just look at those uh, uh, right now to get started. So if you have your pink sheet out, las partes del cuerpo, remember tomorrow I'm going to ask you to label 15 from memory. So the, the easiest way to do that will be basically think through the song in your head. Las partes del cuerpo, vamos a cantar y tú las tienes que tocar. El pelo, la cabeza, el cuello, la garganta, los hombros, los brazos, los dedos y las manos. ¿sí? If you can do that song uh, from memory, you can do 24, no problem. I'm only asking you to do 15, ¿sí? Uh, bien, there are quite a few on the list that are not in the song, of course. Um, some of those being uh, las caderas, the hips, los muslos, thighs, uh, los tobillos, the ankle. Remember, I asked you to change el pecho to chest. Uh, las muñecas, wrists. El estómago isn't in the song, but that's a cognate, obviously, stomach. El codo, elbow. Las axilas, armpits. My class on Friday made the association between las axilas and uh, uh, axe body spray, right? Muy bien. Las pestañas, eyelashes. Las mejillas, cheeks. Las cejas, eyebrows. Uh, el bigote, mustache. La barbilla, chin. And la barba, beard. So since you have your pink sheet out going along here, I would just say, why don't you uh, practice labeling uh, Diego, Dora, Shakira, y uh, this presidente right here, um, Enrique Peña Nieto, if, if you want, just try going from memory without looking at your vocab. Try to cover up your vocab and just see how many you can label right now. If you have no problem labeling 15, hey, you can probably just skip on to uh, the doctor stuff for now, see? 
But if you're having a difficult time labeling 15, then uh, why don't you go back through the song uh, one more time. And we're all going to do the song together right now. Las partes del cuerpo. If you type in, just like I did to YouTube, las partes del cuerpo, it will uh, come on. It will be probably the first one to pop up. Pierna, la rodilla, los pies, los dedos de los pies, las partes de la cara, los ojos, la nariz, la oreja, la boca, los labios, los dientes, la lengua y la frente. Y no empezamos otra vez. We're not going to start otra vez. Muy bien. So you guys get the point. I just wanted to open that video back up so you could see, hey, if uh, I forgot how to access it, you just type into YouTube Las Partes del Cuerpo. Bien. Eh, próximo. Vocabulario del doctor. Um, I'm just going to go through these one more time, and I want you guys to simply listen and repeat after me. Um, one thing I didn't do a lot in Spanish, too, at the beginning of the year is go over the vowels and sounding words out. Uh, we're really working on that a lot right now in Spanish 1 and finding that it's uh, impacting my students' ability to pronounce words very well. So remember in Spanish the vowels A, E, I, O, U. Whenever you see it, uh, the letter A, it's A. Whenever you see the letter E, it's E. Whenever you see the letter I, it's I. Whenever you see the letter O, it's O. And whenever you see the letter U, it's U. Okay, so when we look at these, here we have two O's. So we're just going to say COMO. Here we have an E, so we're going to say TE. Here we have a U and an E together and an O. Puedo. Here we have an A, a U, and another A. Ayudar. So you put it together. Como te puedo ayudar? Okay, so that's what I'm going to be doing here real slowly. You guys listen and, and practice along. ¿Cuál es el problema? Here, we're, uh, I'm going to put in some partes del cuerpo, uh, see if you can figure out what I'm saying. Me duele el brazo. Me duele el brazo. Be sure to repeat these, right? We're working on our pronunciation here. Lastime la pierna. Lastime la pierna. Me arde el ojo. Me arde el ojo. Me molesta la garganta. Me molesta la garganta. Tengo dolor de la mano. Tengo dolor de la mano. Bien. 
So the doctor now could uh, say a number of things. There are certainly more things he could say than this, but here are some possible explicaciones, ¿sí? Me parece que estás resfriado. Otra vez, repitan. Me parece que estás resfriado. Me parece que tienes la gripe. Me parece que tienes la gripe. Creo que rompiste la pierna. Creo que rompiste la pierna. So the client could respond to the doctor here. Certainly many more ways than this, but we're going to look at some. ¿Qué necesito hacer? ¿Qué necesito hacer? ¿Cómo me puedo aliviar? ¿Cómo me puedo aliviar? Here are some suggestions the doctor may have for getting better. Vas a necesitar medicina. Vas a necesitar medicina. Vas a necesitar terapia. Vas a necesitar terapia. Vas a tener que descansar. Vas a tener que descansar. Te vamos a poner un yeso. Te vamos a poner un yeso. And finally, some expresiones that you can use. Uh, this isn't just for doctors to say to people. This is, you know, these are quite common expressions in the Spanish language. Uh, they kind of take the place of goodbye, maybe. ¿Verdad? Espero que sientas mejor. Espero que sientas mejor. Or, uh, espero que te sientas mejor, también. You can put a reflexive pronoun there. Que descanses. Que descanses. Cuídate. Cuídate. Bien, compañeros. So, again, there will be uh, five kind of fill-in-the-blank uh, questions on the quiz about these doctor expressions, see? So be sure that you feel comfortable uh, using them. Y uh, let's look now at a, a little bit of what we have going forward. Uh, this won't be this week, okay? This will be into next week here. Uh, la rutina diaria. And next week we're going to look at uh, a bunch of new verbs. All of them are brand new. Well, except for dormir. <laughs> but you're going to notice they all have these funky letters at the end. They all have the letters S-E at the end of them. Okay, these are what we call reflexive verbs. And I'm not going to get into what reflexive verbs are today. I just want to call your attention to some of these. Okay, you're going to notice some of them are used with body parts like this one. Lavarse la cabeza. Now, when I tell you that lavarse means to wash oneself or, or to wash, lavar, the verb without the S-E on the end, just lavar, it's an A-R verb, to wash. When you make it reflexive by adding an S-E, you're saying to wash oneself, lavarse. You're going to say, this sounds kind of silly. Lavarse la cabeza. What? to wash one's head, but it's translated as to wash one's hair. I know the curriculum provider I got this from had this down and I thought the same. Why would it say lavarse la cabeza uh, instead of, uh, you guys tell me, when you're looking at your pink vocabulary sheet, if you're trying to say to wash one's hair, what do you think uh, is a better expression for to wash one's hair. Muy bien. Hopefully you put 
lavarse el pelo, or in Mexico, lavarse el cabello would sound a little bit better, ¿sí? Um, ahora, cepillarse, to brush one's hair, ¿sí? Using a cepillo. Uh, oh, I guess I don't even have a picture of a cepillo in here. Um, cepillo, uh, a brush, ¿sí? And then down here we have a verb, lavarse los dientes. So that could be another strange one. You'd be like, well, lavarse, we just learned means to wash. Why do they say, are they saying to wash your teeth or are they saying to brush your teeth? If they are saying to brush your teeth, why don't they have cepillarse los dientes? And this is one in Spanish to where it's, it's quite common to say both. Again, the curriculum provider here uses uh, lavarse los dientes, and it's common. And it's just as common to say cepillarse los dientes, ¿sí? ¿eh? Now they have uh, one more uh, expression with lavarse here, and they have lavarse la cara, to wash one's face. Remember? Partes de la cara, los ojos, la nariz. Partes de la cara, parts of the face. So right here they have uh, to wash one's face. So they have lavarse la cabeza, lavarse la cara, y lavarse los dientes. Hmm. I'm thinking of a really important one that we should be doing uh, quite a bit these days that's not on the list. Can you think of a parte del cuerpo that should be used with lavarse on this list but is not used with lavarse on this list? Hmm. Think about it. Muy bien. Hopefully you said lavarse las manos. And if you haven't been washing your hands lately, uh, that's something that you should consider doing uh, uh, you know, quite regularly, see? ¿sí? So, uh, for today, I just wanted to show you the verb lavar, to wash. Uh, lavarse la cabeza o lavarse el pelo o el cabello. Lavarse la cara. Lavarse o cepillarse los dientes. Y muy, muy importante, lavarse las manos, ¿sí? So, this vocab, uh, what we're going to be doing with... Uh, with body parts after the quiz and after our grammar portion this week on um, stem changing verbs is we're going to be implementing body parts into uh, discussion about daily routine. That's what this is called, daily routine, la rutina diaria, or uh, morning routine might be more accurate. The things that we do uh, on a daily basis to get ready for school. So that is uh, the third portion of unit one. See? Uh, first portion, the parts of the body and the clinic expression. Second portion, grammar, stem-changing verbs, which you see some stem-changing verbs here. They're highlighted. You might wonder, why are there like weird letters highlighted? Well, those are stem-changing verbs, and uh, that's what the second part of unit one is about. And then the third part is putting it all together to talk about our daily routine and what we do to get ready for school each day. So, muy bien, compañeros, that is uh, today's Ed Puzzle lesson. Remember, you do have a quiz tomorrow, so be sure to um, look again at Partes del Cuerpo and Vocabulario en la Clinica or Vocabulario con el Doctor, ¿sí? And uh, when you're done with uh, with the Ed Puzzle today, I strongly recommend putting parts of the body and doctor vocabulary into a Quizlet and studying Quizlet for the remainder of the block. Muchas gracias, compañeros, y hasta mañana.